It's all well and good to plug all of the information into the model, run it and produce lots of nice numbers and graphs. But it's essential to understand roughly how the model is processing all of that information and check that those numbers make sense. How can scientists know that the biomass predicted five years into the future is right? Well, the truth is, they can't. But they can get an idea if it's on the right track. They do this by comparing the model's results with the things that they can measure. What you haven't been told yet is that when the model is estimating things that we don't know, it's also estimating things that we do know, because we've measured them, such as age structure, length structure and catch rates. What this means then is that scientists can compare the model's estimates to the real data, the observations. If the model's estimates are close to the real data, then it gives them confidence in the results. If the estimates aren't close, then the scientists can change some of the parameters and rerun the model. They keep doing this so that the match between the model's estimates and the observations improves. This is called model fitting. Let's look at a simple example of how this might work. Here's a snapshot of a fish stock in each year between 2005 and 2010. In real life, we can't see all of the fish in the stock, but we do know that they are made up of juvenile fish that have just been spawned, young fish that are newly recruited into the fishery, and the adult spawning fish. For the purpose of illustration, we'll pretend that we can see the population structure of the fish stock in each year. Now, here's some of the data collected by observers and fishermen. It represents the age structure of the commercial catch, showing the proportion of young and adult fish that were caught and the catch rates. Catch rates are shown as yellow bars. The higher the bar, the higher the catch rate. We'll put these two types of data into the model and see what happens. Here, the model tries to estimate the fish stock in each year and as you can see, it doesn't do a very good job because it shows the fish stock disappear. We know that's obviously not the case because fish were caught in the years after 2008. Now, let's compare the age structure and catch rates predicted by the model with the age structure and catch rates that were observed. You can see that the two different sets of information aren't even close. In the predicted data, a lot more adult fish are caught in the first year, and expected catch rates are initially much too high and then drop off more quickly. Whereas in the observed data, an even mix of juvenile and adult fish are caught, and catch rates fluctuate a little, but remain stable over the years. The word that scientists use to describe how different the predicted values are from the observations is the likelihood. This literally means, how likely is it that the model represents the observed data well? If the model's predictions are very different from the observations, the likelihood will be low. In this case, we'll give the likelihood a zero. Fitting involves adjusting the parameters until the likelihood of the model representing the observed data is as big as you can get it. Let's change the model parameters a bit and see what happens. This time the results look more like the observations, but are still a bit different because there are more juvenile fish in the catch than were observed, and the catch rates are a bit too high. You can see that the likelihood is better than the first go, but the predictions are still not close to the observations. Let's have another go. This time the results look a lot like the observations, and the likelihood is high. The model is said to fit the data well. When scientists get a model with high likelihood and a good fit to the data, their confidence in results from the model increases. That means with the information they have, they believe they are modelling the fish population as well as they can and have confidence in the model's predictions. Scientists then check models by adjusting the parameters and testing the assumptions. This is called sensitivity testing and really means they are testing how sensitive the model's outputs are in response to these adjustments. For example, when modelling the tiger flathead population, scientists do things like make their estimate of natural mortality 50% higher or lower. They might change the relationship between the spawning stock biomass and recruitment, or change the growth rate. The other thing that sensitivity tests do is to highlight the parts of the information that need to be looked at more closely. 
For example, if the results are very sensitive to changes in growth, then it might mean that more growth information needs to be collected. Now we've seen how the stock assessment models work and how we can tell if they make sense. The next thing to look at is how they get turned into TACs. That's where fisheries managers apply harvest strategies. And we're going to look at that in our final section, Fishing for the Future.